Yeah. Yeah. It's true. And like, um, mine, for mine, they always had trouble clipping the wire in the back. So the, the wire would be jamming into my cheek. I fucking went bananas at school one day because it was hurting me so much. And they don't even care enough to look back there and care because they they could do their job better. It's just it's hard. And it is, like, it is well, hard. Yeah. Go. I'll cut it how I do and pretend I don't notice. If she's not crying, then they can come back and have another charge. That's hard another on Alan. Yeah, and my parents so, didn't. Yeah. We've got all the typology answers. We do have them. Right here. Yeah. We're just waiting for typology questions. And ice cube tray drawings. Yeah. I've drawn out all of my drawings. Now I'm ready to answer all of your typology questions. Just go ahead. Just boom, boom, fire them away. What is this? What is that? Why are those? What are those? Who are these? Why are them? Yeah. Everything you always want to know. Nashville 5 with Chris Hebert Reels is here. Oh, yeah. First versus fourth slot. Uh, they're two sides of the same coin. So, you know, you can think of your first and fourth slot as who you are, and your second and third is how you be. The thing is, as the first and fourth slot for me, it's Lots of ideas, too little keeping track of them. Uh, SI Dom, lots of keeping track, too little ideas. Who would have known the ice cube tray is like the hardest thing to draw? It's got so many dimensions to it and so many of the same shapes. Hmm. It's a toughie. It's because water is one of the most difficult things to freeze. I'm just on the plain one. I thought that the one... With the ice flying was going to be fun. Now I'm like, a, I'm afraid. Unlike my ass off, that's constantly freezing. Fi fourth. Yeah. Fi fourth is an odd one. Uh, I see it in my dad. Uh, about, I guess my mom. Like right now, we just had a conversation about. He wants to take her to the dentist to make sure he's that she's not in pain basically, and I think it's a good idea, and he feels a need to care for, do harm prevention, other FI stuff, but it's always framed through a TE frame of reference. So, uh, as far as ENTJ, I'm not sure quite sure how that plays out to prove. I don't have a lot of experience with ENTJs. I would imagine it plays out. It plays out on a less specific level. Like my mom, my dad's concern for my mom's teeth and stuff. It's a very SI tool function with FI fourth under a TE frame, you know? The possibility that she might be need to see a dentist, that's kind of any third. It's like textbook ESTJ. That was a good suggestion with the clonopin. Roundly mm -hmm. ignored, but of course, but that's just that's just how dad rolls, you know. Mm -hmm. Um so that's the thing about third slot any &E is even if I've got good ideas that might help solve a problem, dad's not necessarily in the market for my good ideas. Um Especially if they're out of the box at all. <laughs> so anyway, yes, I'm here with all the typology answers. All you have to do is ask all your typology questions. And I am going to provide answer after answer after answer. Why are fourth and eighth so similar? Well, because fourth is, for one party, sort of. thing you know you have to do more of and eighth is sort of the thing yet you, you know you have to do enough of ah thank you this is similar but a little different yeah they are very similar in my mind 
Do but, these bees okay. find it all right for people to disappear and pop in again? They themselves? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's totally fine. I expect that. Is this still the drawing party? Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, not this one. No, I'm saying not this one, but this one. Yeah. 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 Totes my goats, bro. Mm -hmm. That's Totes like number four or goats. five, sort of. <coughs> <coughs> That's going to be a uh, shitstorm of ice cubes coming out of that. That's going to be quite a drawing coming up. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, ice cubes coming out of an ice tray, it could be ice cubes going into a glass. And throwing two ice cubes into glass? Yeah. Right. Or I could just have the two ice cubes with cartoon movement with no hand, maybe. Uh, that would be fine, too. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sweet. Do you have any other fun weaves to try? Um, I just have that one weave right now. Oh, actually, we have a little bit of something else. We have a little bit of Meagly Meow. Meow? I'm not sure what Meagly Meow is, but it's different from Meagly Meow. I do know that. So let's see here. I missed the last half of the premiere last night. Would, would a self-diagnosed identity disorder be something that's easily acceptable or easily dismissed? Wouldn't you be dead wrong or dead right? I mean, I think the core issue at question in that stream with that guy was what comprises a disorder versus what comprises, you know, in other words, is a disorder really just an extreme form of the same mechanism by which people resolve their own personality would be my best interpretation of his, my best phrasing of what I think he was trying to get at. Like, in other words, is it the case that I'm an ENTP because I found alternative means of being traumatizing? And, uh, and I found the means of being that is least traumatizing. And that's why I am the way I am. Uh, to a certain extent, it, you know, I came up with an example that would be consistent with that notion, which is when I was a little kid and I wanted to sing one Christmas song and the other kid was singing another Christmas song and I didn't like it. And it was in, coming back from preschool. I was probably three and a half, you know, maybe four years old. Um, and uh, I hit him over the head with a rock. What? Well, he shouldn't have been singing. <laughs> Freaking gangster. Why shouldn't he have been singing? Well, because I was singing, Rachel. That's why. Because I was singing. So this is Eric using his F-I and his S-E, right? F-I, S-E didn't work out very well for Eric uh, in that instance. But I think that it would be making a leap for sure to say that as a consequence, um, I'm an ENTP because I had that experience or similar experiences. I think it's much more likely that being an ENTP, I experienced one of the downsides of being an ENTP, which is if you try to use FISE, bad shit happens. It's a lesson learned. Yeah. Are there, uh, can someone go through events in life that make their personality change? Does someone have a traumatic event and then like, I mean, that's permanently a, have a different personality? That's a commonly asked question and a point of rather big dispute, I think. Um, okay. The thing is, uh, As a general rule, people's personality doesn't change throughout the course of their life. And while significant trauma may affect somebody's affect, or maybe even to a certain extent, 
their attentional habits for a short period of time, um, it's most likely they're going to express that trauma as through their their nature. So when my first wife cheated on me, I wrote a bunch of poems about it. Uh, that's partially how I, how I dealt with it. Um, and I spent a lot of time also imagining, visualizing and imagining things that made me feel very bad. Uh, I use a lot of extroverted intuition. When I was dealing with it in a more healthy fashion, I was taking care of myself. I was not worrying too much about the ideas and the stuff. And I was making sure I would, I'd eaten enough and was, you know, so in that regard, it's the case that if you experience trauma and you respond to it in a healthy fashion, that you kind of retreat to your fourth function. My second wife didn't cheat on me. <laughs> that's a, that's a oh, funny right. question, Rich Mac. <laughs> no, that's the only time I've been cheated on that I know of is uh, first wife. But good question. <laughs> what gets drama affected were long time if not intentional habits. Well, see, here's the thing. Oh, it's hilarious. It was great. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, what can trauma affect over a long time with not intentional habits? Well, I would say behavioral habits. So, when I was with somebody with BPD, and, and being an SI user means I tend to respond to these things example first and then extrapolate out meaning from it. This is just what it means to be SI conscious and I unconscious, right? So, uh, what I saw was what they usually describe in psychology as a trust disorder. So, normal people, if you play a game where you can't talk to each other, you're in separate rooms or whatever, and there's an exchange happening that if you engage in a mutually trustworthy fashion, then both people benefit. If you engage in a, in a untrustworthy fashion, then only one person benefits. And over the long term, nobody does. So, the thing is, there are also random fluctuations that make it unclear always whether the person intentionally did that or whether it's part of the fluctuations. So when they test people with attachment disorder on this test, they can't, as soon as they have a fluctuation that suggests they might have reason to mistrust that person, they can't go back to, to affording them trust again. In other words, a, an olive branch, a, uh, an offering in the future that says, hey, just want to reassure you that wasn't me being being untrustworthy, that was just uh, date, you know, noise in the data, doesn't convince them to be more trustworthy. They have a lot of trouble also with what's called power exchange and relationships accordingly, which is to say, in a healthy relationship, people want to have an even exchange of power. So, you know, if I, if I remember that I picked the restaurant the last four times, I'll want my partner to have the chance to pick the restaurant. Um, let me see what got deleted. <laughs> oh. Winston's mom, did you just get here? <laughs> we already had a conversation about that. I thought it was hilarious. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> it got deleted, but not <laughs> I, I, I agree it. It smacks of whatever, but um, I thought it was a great thing to say, personally. <laughs> it was what you call a snappy retort or something. Here, Cameron, let me, it was let me pass funny. this back to you. Yeah. Now, the thing is, it probably would have hurt if, in fact, my second wife had cheated on me. <laughs> then I'd be mm -hmm. like, you, nah! and I'd boot his ass or whatever, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't like that. And that's FI for you. It's fundamentally unfair. You know, sometimes when I'm driving in the car, I have this little fantasy of me uh, standing in front of a microphone 
being broadcast on all the networks saying, I want to make one thing clear. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Nobody can, period. Okay? Hope you get that dream come true. Yeah. No cake and eat it too. You can have your meow, you can have your meow, but you're going to have to take what comes along with it. You can't have your meow without yeah. meow. You know? I know, Rich Mac. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not very, uh, I'm not particularly sensitive in my feelings, really. You know, sometimes I think I am, but uh, I'm not really sensitive around here, I guess. What is NI6 slot? Um, it's, it's never knowing when you're done. It's like uh, INFP, INTP can ideate to a great NI conclusion and then keep on going. <laughs> you know, they, they never know when they're done. <laughs> there should not be a meow counter. Meows are irrational numbers. You can't count them. No means no means nothing to you. Well, nothing means nothing to me. What about yes means yes? Yeah, what about... Does yes mean yes mean something to you? How about yes meaning no and no meaning yes? Do those mean things to you? It, opposite thing. Yeah. I didn't rape her. It was opposite thing. <laughs> <laughs> Judge. Judge. <laughs> it was April 1st. It's what, April 1st. It was just an April Fool's joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a joke. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. It's a joke. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to upset. She slipped. Oh, <laughs> Hi, Dad. Oh, hey. on that other uh, topic, if you've got a couple of uh, good shots, uh, forward it to me if you would. Yeah, what's your email? Your uh, text? gmail.com. Is so that what you want to send me pictures of? Oh, um, let me show you the pictures from today. Is it my mom or what? Yeah, it was your mom and your dad. Okay. There are a couple videos in there somewhere. If you go one way or the other, it's a picture of an ice tray, so you'll figure out which way to go. <laughs> Cool. Oh, I like what she's wearing. She looks warm. It was the best weather in like months. It was perfect weather for the first time. That's great. These ones where great. she's looking at the books are great. That is great. I like how your phone does that live photo thing. You do like or do not? I do. I like it. And what's interesting is you don't realize it because it's not playing the volume right now, but you'll open it on some computer somewhere and it'll play the volume. So some day in the future, you'll open something from like 2000 and something and you're saying, well, fuck, they're in your picture, or I am. You guys, not as, not as much. That's so funny. Yeah. Seb dude says, so how would I deal with emotions as an ENTP? What works for you when being close to exploding with emotions? Um, I mean, the only emotion I get 
that bothers me really consistently that I can think about dealing with is anger. <coughs> Sometimes I avoid it. Sometimes I indulge in it. Sometimes I indulge in it and then realize I wish I hadn't indulged in it. Uh, you know. Um, I generally don't walk around in a state of emotion. I walk around in a state of, I guess, well, I guess I would say uh, this is my, this is my very advanced, in my opinion, seventh slot FI. I've begun to notice a, that I can measure my, my emotions in terms of degree of enthusiasm. So, how much enthusiasm do I have to do shit? That's something I can tell. And it's a, it's an emotion of sorts. So like, I'm either feeling like getting shit done or I'm not feeling like getting shit done. Sometimes I feel kind of, I guess you might say sad about it. Like, or more like ho hum, I guess. Um, sometimes I feel more like eager to get into the rye rye. Hi, David Grandam. Can I ask a dude question for dudes? Sure. Is any seventh bad at Inky Pinkies? Yes. Any seventh is very bad at Inky Pinkies. Or one word says he's F I eighth, not seventh, but I find hopping up and down when I'm mad and or first to attempt to help bounce the energy up. Huh. <laughs> so let's see. I guess that would be for me, when I'm having problems with eighth slot, I need to feel strongly. You know. Dude, question. Why are there some girls you, you want to just bang, but other ones you, that are actually beautiful to you? You want the actually beautiful one, but you actually, you also kind of want to bang the farmer. Why is that the case? <laughs> I mean, I can't explain anything about sex. It defies explanation. You're hardwired to get tingly loins. Gen Exil, you think you can guess Inky Pinkies easily? Let's see, Gen Exil. I'll make one up right now. All right, this is a Inky Pinky Gen X heel. It's a consumer for a fast food hamburger. It's a consumer for a fast food hamburger. It's an Inky Pinky. Consumer for a fast food hamburger, Inky Pinky. Everybody's willing to try to guess, but. Gen X Seal, don't you look at the answers here in the live chat until after you come up with the answer. I see just how good you are at it. Mr. ISTPs can do this just fine. Without Googling anything, please. Okay, more yes. Luca Mount Mullen, yes. Thinking about redoing this. <clears throat> um, it looks more like an angry, an angry highball glass. <laughs> you know, like these these, oh, these are yeah, eyeballs yeah, with okay. angry oh. eye. With it's the first one I did only two <laughs> of the cartoon movement lines on. He looks kind of like an angry. He's got a kind of. Misshapen eyes, but he's an angry highball glass. Right, let me show you these with more eyebrows. <laughs> it 
Pinky Panky. That was just a more, the rest of the drawing is more finalized there, but that's more eyebrow. I like this, except for the fact I would say it looks like medieval helmets are going into there. <laughs> I was looking at one picture where they had this weird, like, triangulized ice. So I went to regular ice. And I think this is too many lines up, maybe. Yeah. Those are my critiques of it. But, but do you like, like a, show it to the people? Yeah, so I'm sure. I'm talking about. We're not looking at her, we're looking at. Yeah, the medieval helmet's going into the glass. I'm hungry to have something sweet. I'm going to get an ice cream. All right, and then there was this one. That one there with excessive helmetry. But I kind of like the, the lines I was doing there on the bottom, sort of. But, okay, so on this one. The answer to next deal is Whopper Shopper. If you were to say, do this one more something... You would say you like it more like this in some way, like just more simple, less circles, or I like this just fine. I just think maybe the cubes are too big for the glass. Okay, the and, glass is a little flat on the bottom, and these lines make it look like it's angry. Okay, so different lines. Uh, yeah, I'm and not sure how to make it not look angry, but fair enough. <laughs> okay, one's an inadequate sample size. Fine. Okay. Uh, that's, sample of one. That's my friend Cameron Grogu. He's an ISTJ. He's drawer extraordinaire. What I do drawings? What do I think about an e room? You can toggle that, you know, Legends Full. You have the ability to toggle. Perhaps you've not considered using the toggle switch. You know, I'm so glad that Legends Fall brought up the important issue tonight of toggling. We don't talk about toggling enough, do we? Um, okay, what do I think about an Egram? I think it's good. I like it. I, uh, I like thinking of there being basically, uh, you know, a triad of of an egram type, one of which is predominant, one of which is secondary, and one of which is tertiary. So, in that regard, um, um, in that regard, it's whatever. I don't know. Who cares? Next question. <laughs> I'll put a link here. All right, just the ice. Those look like good ices, yeah. All right. Uh, what are we looking for here? Okay. First thing I want to recommend to everybody who needs to know something important about life, take a trip on the love boat. The 1970s version of the love boat. Chris Chepin, you done ghost in yet? Cameron, is there a, a difference in drawing recognizable items versus drawing shapes, proportions, movement, et cetera, in the abstract? I can do it all. I'm just going for precision here. Um, it just takes different amounts of time, and I tend to go for only really good drawing. I mean, he doesn't really do abstract. You don't really do abstract stuff. I mean, I've never. I don't know. I do different. I mean, that's more like daydreamy stripes and planets and things or whatever. Um, I don't know. I. I've probably done, done a lot more realistic things lately, maybe because I'm good at it. I like to do it. Um, is that enough? 
the thing is, I can use the word tri type without having to pay anything, but I'm just being spiteful, I guess, and saying, no, I'm not even going to use your word anymore, dummy. And of course, I still get her emails because I had to put my email address in to take her test, which correctly typed me a 784 and then said, yeah, but you're really a counterphobic six because you're a meta analyst. And I don't like that because I'm an analyst. Did I make another cartoon character? Did I make another SpongeBob pineapple head? You know, that one looks a lot better, though. Is he still, he still look a little bit like an angry glass? Well, he looks more like a yeah. neutral glass this time. A little bit more like a neutral glass. But I think that's perfect. I think that's great. Fair enough. Let me take a picture of it. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> I may end up, in my own usage of it, cutting off a couple of these lines on the top. Perfect use of Photoshop. Yeah. But I'll get him in the picture. So I really will do something to make my own art setup with like a portable light box sort of thing. I will do it sometime. I'm just not quite sure. So we're talking uh, we're talking cognitive functions, and we're using these pictures here because we're making a a big metaphor here. The ESTP is basically a faucet. The ISFJ is basically a sponge. But we also need to have the tool function and the third slot function. So the tool slot function is your ice cube tray. The um, for for the um, for the ESTP and it's the putting ice cubes in glasses for the uh, ISFJ and vice versa. Um, so, um, in other words, what's an absolute value to, uh, to one, having ice cubes put in their glass is just the normal day and day, day and day out tool function of the other. And what is um, what's well, an absolute value to the to the other, namely having ice cubes available to put into glasses, is uh, is the tool function of the other one. So it's complementary in that fashion. And then on the back side, we've got um, where we've got this the sponge and the the faucet are one five for each other, right? Then the uh, the um, in the fourth slot we're talking about what's the other way to know? So in the fourth slot we've got empty cups. So whereas the dominant is a sponge, the easiest way to clean up the extra faucet, the fourth slot of the um, of the ESTP is the empty cup. So in other words, they're trying their faucet, they're always pouring out, out water out of themselves, more so than they have empty cups to fill. They get somebody who's got an absolute value of a sponge, who mops up their extra stuff. And uh, concurrently, there's an eight slot function that's basically a dishwasher, right? Empty glasses need to be washed. So that's the, that's the analogy for the fourth and eighth. It'll be a lot easier to to explain when it's with the pictures that go along with it, right? So that's why we need pictures for these things. And Cameron's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Much appreciated job for helping us out with this. And um, and so Rachel's been looking at the, the stacks here. You know, this is how we normally talk about these things. But Rachel and I are going to be producing these videos to try to eliminate all the jargon. It's harder than it seems. You know, it's like yeah. we've been thinking about metaphors and various things to uh, eliminate the jargon. And especially for somebody like me, who's NI ignoring, it's hard. And Rachel's NI dominant, but that just means she probably 
recognizes when I say a good idea and goes, yes, or remains silent when I have a not so good idea. <laughs> it's typically her strategy. Mm -hmm. And I go, hmm, I guess that's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I see. I need to go down. I've failed to scroll down. I'm sure David Gray and Um... And I use a strainer. Well, the thing is, with all of these drawings that I'm asking Cameron to do, uh, he's doing just uh, basic line drawings so that then in GIMP or whatever, I can fill them in with colors and I can do some stuff with color, color matching so I can show how the, uh, you know, I could show how the one and four are dark blue and light blue or something like that. I haven't, we, I have to play around with it some. I don't, I'm not an NI DOM. I don't have a clear vision going in. And uh, I think I probably, I've probably done an inadequate job thus far of asking Rachel what she thinks as a vision for the whole thing. Um, I expressed what I, I mean, you're like ahead of me on it, but I'm still like down to do it, obviously. Like, I know it's going to come together. I have no, I, I just think that things will come together at its own time because we're doing it work. We constantly work on it. Like we're constantly talking about it and stuff. Yeah. We're not really doing concrete work on it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I suggested that we have at least like the the stacks for each of them, the eight stacks for each of the types that we do so that people can um, see. I mean, the thing is, I think we've come what you're getting at is that men tend to think of chicks as being either girlfriend material or not girlfriend material, right? It's like uh, there's a new song by this chick, Beach Bunny, that we um, I, we started listening to. I, was, I heard it in the car this morning, and uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and what it said, the title of the song is "Good Girls Don't Get Used," and I think that that is basically what uh, a lot of what Leaf Trimmer is getting at is that there's a male perception that there are some girls that are for using. And some girls who are for marrying or whatever, right? So, um, all right, cool horse mumbler. Um, I mean, I think I think the bottom line is I'm gonna have to we're, we're gonna have to make a few like practice takes there, or just end up on the cutting room floor, just so I can get a clear sense myself of of what it is exactly it's going to look like in the end, because I just, I've got to, uh, I got to play mashed potatoes with stuff at a certain point. I can't, I can only and I in my head so much. And then I can, I, I won't even know what to bring to you, you know? So I gotta, I gotta mash potatoes a bit, play it out where we're actually talking it out and seeing how that sounds, etc. So what do you think of this uh, banana stuff, Cameron? <laughs> I don't know what banana stuff because we have no um, idea what the name of it is. <laughs> I, when I first smelled it, I just wasn't sure. I couldn't tell if it was like low or medium or high. I couldn't tell. Um, breaking it up, I just still wasn't sure of smoking it. I didn't really notice it, although it seemed to, I don't. I wouldn't say it's like a super heavy hitter, but it hit fine. I didn't notice anything weird. It's kind of like... Uh, a bus bench, you know, as long as there's nothing wrong with it, it's just fine. Yeah. So, uh, if there's something wrong with it, then you're like, can you do this? But, um, it's fine. This is a very good question. What I'm motivates you to clean? Indeed. What motivates me to clean? Um, it's a great question. Really, it's uh, a buildup of general sense of ignoring, ignoring. SI for too long. 
So I cleaned a little bit earlier today, somewhat motivated by Cameron yeah. coming over, but actually not really more motivated by the fact that um, I had energy and I just felt the need to clean. I took a bath, I brushed my teeth, I ate some food, I cleaned up around here, I organized, I uh, generally attended to stuff I needed to attend to. I got this typing session done that I needed to do. She was an ENFJ. Really beautifully textbook SI polar, which is just so nice when you get this perfect SI polar person who's so textbook. Eric, I noticed that you cleaned up. Oh, thanks. Do you like when I say that? Do you care? No. Okay. Because I didn't say it until you. Because I genuinely clean up for SI reasons, not for FE reasons. Yeah. Um, I like a cleaner. And I like a cleaner more than I like to clean. So I always am going to feel like I'm behind on my SI, right? When it catches up and I go, okay, I can't play comfortably anymore because it's too much of a mess in here. Then I realize, okay, you need to attend to the sensory half of the world. See, this is the deal about, about um, inner type relations. Rachel and I are the same type relation as ESTP ISFJ. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why we're doing ESTP ISFJ first. The fact is they are complementary, not compensatory. And there's different kinds of compatibility, right? Complementary compatibility makes it easier for both people to be themselves. Okay. Um, which is to say, it, they, uh, both parties excuse the <coughs> other and their deficits, basically. Uh, nice thing about INFJ, ENTP, we don't judge each other on our being too metaphysical, basically not paying enough attention to the physical half of the world. So that makes us even more so that way. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it, it depends. It's both, you know. The alternative, the compensatory kind, is you get SI instead of NI. You know, for me, it would be ISFJ instead of INFJ. That one makes me more focused on the physical world, less lost in cl the clouds, more doing with shit in the world, but also um, um, I mean, the question totally threw me for a loop. Uh, but also, you, you know, the ENTP finds himself focusing a lot on stuff that's not very important to him, you know, so when I've been in that relationship, I did a lot of SE stuff that was directed towards SI stuff around the house, being very, uh, you know, I built, I built a chicken coop, for example. Um, <clears throat> not something I'm likely to do in the relationship with Rachel. Now, Upton Plates 48 asked me this really strange question. Do you think the way that you infantilize your adult girlfriend is why people assume you're an ESFJ? I mean, talk about a triple whammy. Number one, it except I was expected to accept that I do infantilize my adult girlfriend. Number two, I expected to accept that people generally assume I'm an ESFJ. And uh, I mean, I don't think either of those things are true. So, what would you consider infantilizing to be? In terms of leadership, what would an ENTP strength be? I'm considered a people person without constant praise and continuous direction. My team flounders at times with thoughts. I would refer to Pete Carroll's uh, thoughts on that matter, which is you have to always bring the energy if you're the leader of something that the, the team, the group follows your level of energy. If you're inconsistent, they'll be inconsistent. And that's unpleasant to bring HP to realize. But definitely proved true for me as a debate coach.
Um, the thing about the the polar is uh, they ever model my shit in Python or whatever. No, I as I said many times before, that's for somebody else to do, not for me. Um, I don't know how to do that stuff. Uh, <laughs> but if if I can come to a point where I think it's it would be helpful, I will I will turn to you for some more, for sure. Um. <laughs> Notice how well I'm staying out of these conversations recently. You really have been. Well, what's my vision? It used to be 2020. Now I have trouble reading things up close. It's gone. Oh, down a you bit. and I both used to have, well have 2020 vision. No, there are still typology answers left, Dallas, for sure. Which you just have to ask some typology questions because there's a whole bag of typology answers left. It's chock full. Is it, we got we we got a half pound of typology answers. They were on sale. Dude, wow. dude, indeed. Hey, Karma's pimp. Guess what I'm doing? Guess what I'm doing, Karma's pimp. I'm pointy fingers at you. People typically don't <laughs> recognize their polar because they can't even they usually misidentify it as something else. So Rachel will talk about TE and she's really talking about SE. Or she'll talk about TE and she's really talking about SI. Um, what is the logic behind cognitive functions? Could genetic mutations cause aberrant cognitive function stacks? Uh, the logic behind them is basically that half of them are linguistic. Okay, first of all, and the other half are not. So, uh, the other logic of it is that to be a human being, you need to both be able to know, deliberate, take action, and there's a fourth one too that's less intuitively obvious, which is interface with dynamic systems. So, that, that knowledge and deliberation are distinct, is easy to demonstrate and prove, and ob observationally so. For example, if I say, um, how old are you? You know the answer. If I say, what's 2,422.77242 divided by 620.54232, you're going to have to spend some time, um, you're going to have to spend some time deliberating out the answer. You can still figure it out, but it's not something you know, right? So once we acknowledge that there are two different kinds of attention, that is to say knowledge and deliberation, and that they are distinct and, and easily enough, the definitions are easily enough operationalized in the sense that you can clearly make a distinction as to whether something is knowledge or whether it's deliberation by whether it requires time to attain an answer. So we can make other observations like that that essentially are indisputable observations, such as we have two forms of, of time that we deal with. We've got a uh, form of time that's turn-based. That is to say, it doesn't matter if I say this a little faster or a little slower, or even if there's coughing in the middle, it doesn't matter because it's turn-based. And my turn is still continuing. I can go with whatever pace I want. It doesn't matter. The information is the same. If it's real time and I'm driving to the basket and I have to stop and hold my dribble while Rachel coughs, then the ball gets taken away from me because that's a real time progression of events. We don't have a turn based approach to it. What makes something turn based or what makes something real time is whether it's one of those linguistic style functions or whether it's one of the non linguistic ones. So, the, what's the logic behind it? The logic is predicated on some. Um, some incredibly difficult to dispute observations. And um, and the fact that it's definitionally, definitionally necessary that if you spend all your time talking out ideas, rendering new explanations for the same ideas or explanation, new, new ideas to explain things in a different way or whatever, 
that you're not then spending most of your time keeping track of the ideas you come up with. That in fact, you're most of the time spending talking. So what am I spending most of my time doing? Am I spending most of my time talking or am I spending most of my time organizing the talkings I've done before? Well, obviously the former, not the latter. So um, the thing is, if you are, if you are an introvert in your head, much of that talking is done not in front of everybody. Uh, I also do a lot of talking that's not in front of people when I'm going through the day, when I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm talking to myself. Sometimes Rachel will I'll be, we'll be sitting silent and I'll then say, meow, 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 meow. The thing that's meow, 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 I say to her is the end of a long series of talking in my head that got me to meow, 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 meow which then I basically go, and the way I got here, Rachel, is, and I explain my thought process to her, you know. And she blessedly listens to that. She's a, a wonderful human being. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, so if someone is T-I-S-E or F-I-S-E, are they turn-based real-time or can they be balanced to do the between? Okay, so here's the deal. The ideal situation for um, S-E-T-I, for example, is a sporting event. Because they they have to uh, or you know you know or T I S E really because in both instances they've got to have a a frame of reference that's static, namely the rules. And so it's it's a a grammar that never gets challenged. Nobody ever. Somebody might challenge whether or not the ref made the right call, but nobody challenges whether or not stepping on the out-of-bounds line makes you out of bounds. So that means the frame is constant, steady, unchanging, and everything that changes within it is in a real-time, fluid, dynamic system with some aspects of it being not real-time, like free throws. Okay? So the key thing there is the frame doesn't change. For a meta-analyst with NE first and then TI, like me, the best sport is debate. Because in debate, whether or not stepping on the out-of-bounds lines makes you out-of-bounds is open for debate. So you can always... Uh, he can You can always argue that, in fact, what they call an abusive, an abusive approach to argumentation is perfectly legitimate. And in fact, that they're calling it abuse is itself a form of abuse and a time suck and you should make it a reverse voter and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can argue anything in debate, right? So that means the frame and the game level stuff are both um, are both fluid or open systems, okay? You can, you can critique both and change both as part of the process. Additionally, both things are turn-based. There's nothing real time really about debate except the, um, the the amount of, the amount of real time skills that are required in a debate are are limited down to this: how fast and clean you can cover the flow, speaking out loud. So um, it, it's like yes, there there is a real time element to debate. Like when I um, when I feel like I've killed it in a debate speech, it means I've covered everything I needed to cover. With the amount of attention to it I needed to cover, I've impacted it the right way. As I said, impacted it as a round deciding important thing in a way that meaningfully links back to my framework and their framework. It's, in other words, I've done a bunch of things in a short amount of time. In that regard, there's a real-time element to debate. But by and large, if you assuming you can do the real-time element successfully, then the um, the key things that are done can be adjudicated after the rounds by going like, okay, well, they said this, and they said this, and they said this, but this said this. And they're right. This doesn't link back to their framework. It does link to this framework, and they're right about this. And this. You can calculate all the arguments out and determine who the winner is. It was a clean round. So the, what, what shows you there are two kinds of types. I just showed you executives. Those who like the frame to stay constant and the action to be fluid and the kind that like the frame to stay 
fluid and the action state fluid. For the meta-analysts, they're dealing with both systems in turn-based, which is why they can handle them being fluid. Okay? Now let's look at the analysts. The analysts want the frame to be fluid, but the action to be static or turn-based. In other words, that's the ultimate T-E-F-I-N-I -I kind of thing, right? It's like, look, I don't care about what's right or wrong. I care about getting this shit done, okay? Now, what's static is the way this bureaucracy works. We know how this works. So we're going to implement that. We're going to jump through the hoops, they say, and we're going to attain the outcome we want. We're not going to worry about the frame. The frame's whatever. The frame's fluid. The frame's whatever. You know, if we are going to worry about the frame, we'll, we'll, we'll simply use that as our, our ability to deal with the frame, the tool function, as a way of, of upholding a frame without actually upholding it. Okay? So that's the analysts. The executors, they go, what frame? You know, they go, what frame? There's no frame. There's just uh, what my frame is. And there's what the way to get there is. You know, that's your people who are ESTJs, ISTJs, ESFPs, ISFPs. It doesn't even link to any larger frames because why bother? Like Cameron, when he's talking about things, I rarely hear him link to things like um, rights and, and like rights violations and... Um, and a bunch of abstractions like that, right? That presumably represents something significant to some people. That's totally kind of just, well, you know, you know, and, I, and ISTJ is likely to agree with this statement. Tell me if I'm wrong, Cameron. Okay. That rights are just a fancy word for for uh, that which you can defend. Rights are a fancy word for that which you can't defend. Um, it, is that all I think of rights? I believe in inalienable rights. I believe rights exist. It's just not my focus in life, so I don't research it. I don't. Right. It, it's just not what I think about much, but I don't think they're silly. I don't think they're just like a thing that's unimportant. I just focus on stuff I'm good at, and so I don't do anything for that. It's just not my thing. Dolis, thank you for your praise. As my supervisor type, I feel your praise makes me glow with, within with a little bit of extra pop. So thank you for that. Oh, you do have extra pop. Yeah, I, when INFPs give me props, it's like, ooh, I impressed an INFP? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, um, I wish our our little guy would come out. I know, I saw him. He's all tucked away. Yeah, he's all tucked away. He's very nocturnal, you know. He doesn't really like to explore during the daytime. Trouble? Mm -mm. No. Lilu, our, our lobster. How big is your lobster? He's a crayfish, actually, but we'll call they, him a lobster. He's yeah. They in the pet store. They said tri-colored lobster. What size? He's, he's like, pretty small still. Little guy? Little guy, yeah. He's, I don't think they're going to get bigger, but I don't know why they call him lobster. The, but yeah, it's a tricolored crayfish. That's kind of fun. Kenton yeah, Davy really says, fun. no, you are a towel. I'm a towel. Okay. It says that they're like really curious, so we have to be careful that he doesn't call out. I think there's enough action in that tank that he's not going to try to crawl. I don't think he's going. I think I hope great place to try to crawl out live in boring tanks. Our tank is full of activity. You should see all the activity in this. It tank. is. No, that's why he's so happy. Yeah. Is it secure in some sort of way so he can knock it out, or he could get out if he? He could. Okay. Well, you can see all the activity going on in there. It just said that. It just, just well, from what I read. Well, just make sure we don't walk on him. You know, <laughs> if he falls out of the thing. Yeah, it's not a big deal. If it's, it's not the biggest deal if, he, if it happens, and and we see him. 
Like, and he survives the fall. Yeah. So, <laughs> so these are things that could happen when you have a curry fish. You know how, like, in kindergartens and elementary school classes, the teachers will apply for that grant and then they'll get like 500 or 1500 bucks so that they have a fish in the classroom. Like, apparently, that's how it works. You get a grant. Like, I thought they just brought them. But huh. you also can get a tarantula. And as you know, a tarantula is a scary, gigantic spider yeah. that for sure traumatize a little girl if she ran into it in the bathroom or something. Oh my gosh. And so, luckily, I wasn't working in this classroom, but I did work in this classroom for like six weeks straight previously to this thing. The tarantula got loose <gasps> over the weekend. And so, um, everyone... They were there on Sunday or something? Like, somebody, like, they got the custodians to come back to the school and disassemble the ceiling um, in the kindergarten, which, once the district knows and the principal knows, you, you're not going to have the kindergartners in there until you have a dead uh, tarantula. Yeah. There's tarantula. Luckily, it was in the ceiling. It was in the drop ceiling. Oh, like, my It's gosh. like, this is better than my crappy cage. Okay, bam. It doesn't have a lid on it, Winston's mom. That's why. I could let the water level go down some. Um, Maybe that might be a good idea. The thing is, Tally is... You're busy? No, hold on. Uh... We were just we were discussing mom's dentistry. I never know what dad's gonna talk about, so I mute just in case. It's usually just something banal like that, but one never knows. Um so uh yeah, about the crawfish and everything. Oh uh, yeah. So yes. it is true that they might eat fish, and that's fine if they eat the fish, because we just yeah. we we got guppies. We never got like a fish, right? We got guppies. We never really did differentiated between them. We've never really named them. We do no, have we do too many guppies. snails. We we looked into alternative things to get to eat the guppies in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, That's why we got the fish. Have I ever eaten crawfish? Yeah, they're delicious. But I'm not gonna ever eat this one because this is my beloved pet. Yes, he is beloved. If you eat just one crawfish, you're gonna really be be hungry for more crawfish, probably. Uh, they are quite good when they're cooked in Louisiana or something. You go down there and get a crawfish boil. I want to try that sometime. They're badass, indeed. Yeah, we'll go there, Rachel, and do that. They're so good. Cool. You can in Oregon. You can go in the river and swim their version of crawfish. 
And if you had like a nice little scuba mask and a net, you could just go and it's cracked. Uh, we stayed in Eugene, so somewhere adjacent to Eugene, there was there was this river that it was like a rock bottom, and in these crevice cracks that were up to like a couple feet deep of sort of like a crevice, there'd just be a bunch of little crayfish, which were the ones that we prepared and ate later, because some guys had traps that we knew. But just imagine like go to Oregon to camp so that you get your snorkeling stuff on and catch the crayfish and then eat the crayfish. How does that sound? Does that sound cool or not? It sounds cool. It does sound cool. How does it differ from lobster? Well, I mean, one thing is basically all there is on it is the tail. So you're not going to get anything out of its little claws. <laughs> um, so you just, uh, you just break off the tail and eat the tail. Some people suck the head, but I don't. Uh, but it, it tastes basically it tastes like this uh, crawfish boil that seasoning stuff they put in there. It's I like this getting delicious. So spicy. hungry talking oh, no. about this. Oh, you like it? All right. Some people hate it. Some people be like, "I am gonna puke if you keep talking about that gross stuff." No, food in general doesn't tend to make me pukey. Hmm. When I was so, a kid, my parents got crawfish from Bristol Farms. And they brought them home. They were live oh, crawfish, yum. and they put them in a in the fridge. And they got out and they cra were crawling all oh over the fridge. <laughs> oh my God. It was like a uh, it was like a Woody Allen movie. Yeah, like Andy uh, Hall. Yeah, right. It's like that kind of a scene. Like, we, but they were like, after we caught. We thought we caught lobster, and we continued to find crawfish crawling around in there for oh one other week or two. You know. <laughs> Oh, looks like we missed one. Oh my gosh. You got to get extra credit when I was in lab biology class in Mr. Keeper's class at Arcadia High. Uh, you could get extra credit and raise your grade like half a grade or something if you brought him a mouse to feed one of his animals, snake or something. So I went to the Temple City Pet and Jungle after school, like on my bike. Or whatever, and they give you the mouse. I think it was just one that I got in like a a lunch bag, uh -huh. like a brown paper bag. That it's not the most secure way to store it until tomorrow. It's better to have your parents drop it off, but you know, you just have one parent and they're at work. You're not that kind of kid. So I'm like, well, in ceramics, in ceramics, I had made this mold of like a, a gigantic mug, a stein. And then I had a shelf that the stein was like a quarter inch shorter than. And I thought I was so smart. You know how smart I think I am. So I'm going to put the mouse into this cup. And then I'm going to just slide it under here, under my bookshelf. Um, it was not a peaceful sleep because I spent time. I had to spend time finding the mouse in my room because mice can go under any gap that they want. Oh, my God. They didn't know that. Surface. They can go through any. As long as there's, they can make themselves out. very flat. Yeah. Wow. They are among the most flattenable of animals. I wonder how them. many flat baby mice it takes to. Flat baby. I forgot about the flat baby. <laughs> I can't um, forget. We have, you know, and I'll tell you, our Lelou, Lelou, he can, uh, he gets very flat. He gets he underneath does. this rock. He gets into the corner flat. too. Yeah, but he's he's a good guy. I like him. Yeah. I want him to be a little bit more, a little <laughs> less shy. He's basically nocturnal, but anytime you turn the flashlight on the tank in the middle of the night, he's out and about doing shit. Oh my gosh! You catch him? Yeah, yeah. And oh he, his God. eyes glow red in the dark. Really? Yeah. That's bananas. And then he he. Freezes for a second, and he scoots away because the light's on him. Nice. You need to get a an action cam at night. Aim the camera there and do a nighttime night like vision do, camera. Do a twelve hour time lapse or something. That'd be fun. That's yeah, but I do have some good footage of the guppies eating. Yeah. Eating the frozen shrimp I put in there earlier. I put the frozen shrimp in for the crawfish, obviously. 
But sure enough, the guppies start pecking right away at it. Wow. Cool. So you needed that one. I remember you saying you needed like a cat, <laughs> laser eyes shooting, Darth Vader <laughs> with Yoda. Yeah. I don't, blowing his head up. I don't remember saying I needed this one, but I didn't it's, call it brain though. It's definitely fantastic. I used this many pens. Um Anyway, I'm going to find the link to this wonderful video. Because this is a video of fish. <laughs> Share. Create link. Create link. Copy. X. Now, what slot function does laser eye shooting cat represent. I think this is Cameron's fourth slot function. Combining with his S-I-T-E, you know. He's like, now I'm going to draw something fun. Just like, now I'm going to take a bath. Um, so, Right. Let me put that link there. Boy. If you want to see a pretty exciting video of my fish up close it is. eating, pecking at a at a frozen shrimp, you can view it right there. And I'll tell you, it's everything you think it's going to be and more. That's saying a lot. Well, saying a little. And that says it all. Okay, time to pull a bowl. He's breaking up some stuff and eating it. Is he? Yeah. Oh, is it aquatic animal time? Oh, underneath the area? Yeah. Aquatic. Well, he's got a lot going on there. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Hmm. I, think, uh, I think he got one of the snails. And he's like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, I wanted to respond to this. The problem was, you said I was a towel. Yes, I'm familiar with towely. Am I towely? I was accused of being a towel. Oh. Um, it's like, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the insult there is. Yeah, I it's think, like, I, I mean, I would think that's a compliment. Um, Tally's cool. I like Tally. He has no problems with anyone, really. I think saying you're a towel is the equivalent of me saying potato in my college class. Can you give that to me? Just Wait. like, it's not, I don't think it's a, it's Tourette's, is all it is. I mean, the thing is, it's, it's not that I can get how, if one wished to, uh, reduce somebody on the grounds of their weed smoking ways. If that somebody were to behave like Towley, then I guess that would be a not a not unheard of or, or not a not unreasonable way to diss them in some sense. Um Towley's a weed smoking character. That's right. Yep. Oh, I see. Your towel is a disc that Towley uses. When Towley is calling someone a, a towel, isn't he just saying, you're a towel? Isn't he, isn't he coming back? Yeah, I think, I think When somebody says to him, you're a towel, doesn't he just say back to them, you're a towel? Uh, isn't that? Yep. Uh, yeah. Towley rules. I love Towley. There are probably college courses taught Towley psychology or Towley philosophy where some professor will teach you to do this language. You're a towel. Refers to Sarge and Erickson or something. So um Yeah, it's like when um, when Jeffrey's mom wants to 
figure out exactly what it is the teacher wants and give that to the teacher rather than doing a good job on something. She is displaying anti-polar TE DOM. Um, and then when she's pushing on me to, to work with her kid, she's being both Effie and Essie. She's trying to, to flatter me, and then she's also just trying to say, yeah, or come on, just do it, like an ESTP, basically. So her TE understands that it's going to help to get me to help to do this thing that Jeffrey's having problems with. Her SE actually makes it happen. No, oh no, no. Maybe it's in I ignoring, maybe it's FI absolute value, but I like these people. They've been good to me. Um, I like them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say. I, uh, I want to help them. I like, I appreciate the fact that mom listens to me, even though she doesn't listen to me, you know? <laughs> At least you can say she hears me but doesn't listen to me. Um, yeah, it's FI stuff, I guess. I feel loyal to them. They're, they're always... Well, I mean... They're super understanding. Like, uh, they guess that I'm a um, NDP and they accept that sometimes I'm going to say, I don't feel like it, you know, and I'm and cancel because, sorry, I don't feel like it today. And that, that's just how life goes there. But then they also understand they get to enjoy capacity to constantly change times of the last minute too. So it, it like works out. You know, we both have low professionalism expectations for each other, which is, which is great. We operate basically like family friends, you know? No, not that I want to hump them. <laughs> hey, Eric, do you know if I did a bird and birdcage drawing completed for you? You did, okay. but I've got some bad news. Um, we're nixing those drawings. We don't need them anymore. Because instead, what we're doing is the uh, ice tray, ice and drink, and we've got meh and meh and meh. We got empty glasses and dishwasher, Let and me. then the. Uh, Let's do this. I have things on a page. I'll tell you what they are. You tell me. Cross out or not cross out. Um, the overflowing water, that's done, right? Yeah, we're done with that. The sponge? Yeah. Uh, we Do we have the sponge? I don't think I did the sponge. I don't think you did. You still want the sponge? Yes. Okay, then I'm going to circle, which means thing that is not done. Keyhole we've got, that's done. Key we've got. Bird thing was maybe. We're going to ditch, ditch the bird thing. That's right. No bird. Dishwasher. We, we got. It. That one's done. Empty cups. Empty glass. I can take. We have the empty cups here. Or also, I can take it from the um, from the ice falling into the cup. Uh -oh. cup. Okay. And key loop we completed. So on this page, the only thing is sponge. So yeah. I'm going to circle sponge and save the page. Um. Brain and sponge. Brain is still there? Uh, yes, brain, but, but just, no, leave brain alone for right now. We're not going to probably use it for this first video. We may use that, but okay. I, right now I, I, I'm on a different sort of thing I'm thinking about. And okay. that's from a different category of thing. 
French maid, we just completed. We did right? that one. Okay, right. so that is X. Dishwasher, not worrying about dishwasher. Brains is maybe later, but not worrying about it now. Sponge is yes. Uh, and then there, here's like a sink and dishwasher, so maybe sponge and yes, dishwasher. Uh, okay, here's another one. Deciding with a heart and a calculator on a scale. Did we do that one? I feel like I worked. Yes, yeah, I have that one. Okay. Acting with a lightning bolt and maybe a shoot. Yeah, and that's the other category. I think we got with the hand. So there are two categories of thing, right? The the, the um the lightning bolt, the two way thing or whatever, like the the brain the two ways or whatever. Um. Did I complete that? I'm saying that's one category of thing. Okay. The, the other category of thing is the ice cube thing, okay? So, basically, on the, uh, in the, the two pictures we need to complete the ice thing are a picture of, of lips drinking from that glass with, uh, ice cubes in it, and a picture of water filling up an ice cube tray. From ice, ice cubes. glass, yeah, glass with glass. ice cubes in it. Here's one picture, and the second picture is ice water cubes. going into the ice cube trays. Hi, everybody. I'm back. I'm back from talking with Cameron. I haven't watched it. How was it, Mackenzie Hoffman? I heard it was boring. What? The video that some guy made with that other guy. That's some guy. Let's get there at 557. Five. Oh, yeah. Um, several people have said that they don't think he's in the NGB. Um, I don't, I don't see any particular reason to not think he's in the NGB. Somebody suggested INFP, and I thought that that was possible. ESTJ for CS Joseph, I agree in general. <sighs> Meanwhile, for those of you wondering where these sounds keep coming from, is the ongoing slap fight in the chat. Who's it between this time? <sighs> who, who is in the middle of every slap fight? Leaf tumor. Yes. He is to slap fights what a giant black hole is to the center of the galaxy. Facts. Hmm. Maybe that's a maybe that's a poor analogy. Maybe <laughs> he is to slap fights what the Olympic Games are to synchronized swimming. The only place any anyone ever cares about synchronized swimming. Oh, it's true. What synchronized slap fights? Now that would be a lot more interesting. While swimming. <laughs> <laughs> synchronized swimming slap fights uh, seems like a good um, a good idea. So it's like each team takes turns synchronizing their slaps. To the other team, and then um, they also have to wear gloves that they take off and slap the other person with. Well, you know, it's like, all right, I typed this lady earlier today. So her name was Alf or something, and uh, she was an ENFJ, and she didn't want it recorded. But anyway, uh, she was saying how. She'd been typed by, I guess, OP. She's, it sounded like she's coming from OP. 
What's with me? Objective personality. <laughs> um, the hilariously named objective personality. So anyway, uh, she said uh, they typed her as ISFP. I said, that's ridiculous. Um, I said, well, it's because I I play music and stuff and make music. And I said, there are a lot of good NFJ musicians, like Billy Joel's an ENFJ and Kanye West. And she said, oh, my God, they said Kanye West. You're just like Kanye West. Like, who the fuck thinks Kanye West is an ISFP? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, How wrong you have to be to think Kanye West is an ISFP. I'm not blaming this lady at all. She she rejected this as, as strange and making no sense. That's how she ended up finding out about me, right? And uh, I'm just blaming OP for, like, just because somebody plays music doesn't make them an SFP for fuck's sake. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I mean FFS. I'm trying to keep profanity down to a minimum. <laughs> Thanks, Mackenzie. I'm glad somebody was able to come right here and do it finally. Leaf trimmer, always trimming leaves. Leaf Tremor, always Raymond Reeves. Transformers, more than meets the eye. Yeah. Transformer, we come in many sizes. Buy us now, Eric's dad. Yeah. Rock okay. on. Um... Slab slapping sounds slaptastically silly. Softly six times. Slab slappingly slaptastically silly. Uh, you know what I think is a wonderful new name for my cat? She's a fabulous feline find. She is. You found her in bed. She's a phenomenal feline find. Yeah, Phenomenal. I know, Mackenzie. I don't even have to bother crawling my way back in. I just make make shop up on land, sell coconuts or whatever, you know. Do we have any pencil sharpeners? Yeah. There's that one that was in that box of things that you had a second ago, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do, but it broke my pencil. It broke your pencil? Yeah. Well, which pencil do you want to sharpen? You got pencil you want to sharpen? Uh, yeah. You want hands to me? I shot me a pencil. I got, I got, I, I got, I got, I got shot me a pencil. No problem. Let me see that pencil. All right. Now look at here. This is all you guys to do. Oh no, you I'm want, not doing that. You want to sharpen a pencil? All right. You just get out your knife and you get sharpen like this. Oh, this knife's not that sharp, it's a problem. And that. Where am I? Pencils. Not that Where am I, Gerber? LMA, you put my Gerber somewhere? I'm always putting my things places. Where my Gerber? Let me look. No, not in there. It ain't in there is what I'm saying. What about well? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right, well, hold on now. Hold <laughs> on now. I'm a still sharp, but don't you worry. Don't you worry a little head about it. All right. Here we go. We're going to sharpen with this part down here, which is the sharpest part of the knife. <laughs> you can see this. Oh, oh. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> it's 
right. It's all right. It's all it's right. right. I'm an expert at sharpening. I'm an experienced sharpener. Every man, what is wrong with your pencil? <laughs> this pencil like don't sharpen right. Like you got a wrong kind of pencil, is what this is. Look at, look at that. What is that mess you make of my knife with this pencil? Every man. I do have it on my pencil. Hey, too. Man. I, yeah, I did not know what to do with you. Sharpener. Where did you buy this crazy pencil? <laughs> Can't like no normal pencil I ever sharpened before. That won't fit in the store. I've got a little pencil sharpener, but. Oh, you don't want to go anywhere near this pencil, let me tell you, sir. This pencil will break your pencil. <laughs> I'm afraid I can go out in the community and be accused of being a blackface. Oh, no. It is over. I said, no. It's it, my wife's pencil. She got this crazy pencil. <laughs> now look, Mary Sue, Mary Lou, Louie Man, Ellen Man, Sue Lou. This pencil is gonna have to be sharp enough. God damn your pencil! God damn you! Yeah. And you have your pencil back. I don't like Let's your pencil. See if it's in that little one. Okay. I'm not sure. Enjoy. Probably sharp enough right now, actually, Rachel. Oh, that looks pretty pro. <laughs> yeah. It might, it might actually work. Now. I had like a makeup sharpener for it. I just can't find it. Hey, Eric, I, I'm not happy with this either, but is this anything close to what you're looking for? That's great. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it's, the only thing I would get rid of is a little cheek line. Yeah. I think the cheek line is a little unnecessary. Fair enough. Can I show the people? See? I'll try not to get Rachel's, Rachel's very marky pencil all over everything. <laughs> you know, it, it pretty much kind of seems that like... Is, is that as sharp as you get it? I mean, you go further, right? Or what are you using it for? Just for crying? No, it's for the eyes. Oh, it's for the eyes. Yeah. Listen, I have no idea. Though. It's not a regular pencil. Gotcha. This is like Dr. <laughs> Spock. It's like, what? <coughs> pencil for not art canvas? Yeah. What? And it's messy, too. Okay. There. Oh my gosh. There. Okay, so good as new. I am good as new, finally. Um, you washed it off? Uh, well, I wiped it off the paper towel. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. Same difference. It's almost getting a little bit chilly in here, isn't it? Yeah. Do you stay together with last night's fun win? Or did you oh already gosh, blow apart? Um, so it got a little dirty. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Where's them towels? Paper towels. They're up in there. Over in there. there. Oh, yeah. He's got to look. You ain't looking is the problem. Just look up in there. You are already in here. Next, next to the possum. Look next to next to the possums, I said. You look like possums. Well, you can't find the possums? You can't no, find any of the possums going to paper towel. They're right here. I can't find They're them. right here. Right here. Right next to the possums. When you get your dirty finger on the paper towel, you gotta throw it away. You gotta finish uh -oh. wiping your finger off. Uh-oh. Were you born in a barn? Do you think it was? Okay. Um, uh, I guess they're just trying to prove that they dropped it off. They're trying to eliminate the, the times in which people say, you never delivered it to, to um, Amazon. In other words, they're trying to defer the... Uh, my package was stolen to to local authorities and package thief 
enforcement, not on to not onto them answering questions about whether or not it actually got delivered, you know? I think you can put special attachments to your address with UPS or I'm not sure if post office does it where they'll even photograph the but That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying they did, yeah. yeah. He didn't like that. Uh, it's pretty good though if your packages are always missing. So it's pretty awesome. Mark. I'm coercing your face with coercion so forceful. A trail camera. Oh. I see. <laughs> That's such INTJ thinking, right? You're probably right, Winston's mom. Um, who, who says, I received a trail camera from them that I did not order. Whoever sent it can now use my name for a review of their product. They gained the system. Thank you, Sean Ryan Barron. So when Rachel says, you sing a whole new world, okay? Oh, just says lines. What? You sing this part. A whole new world. Okay. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. That's our, that's our respective <laughs> roles in the song. Okay. Okay. Because she's always daring to close her eyes. I have to tell her, don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> that's my I'm role scared. as Aladdin. You're scared. You're, you're a girl. You're scared. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Eric, is you always verbally explaining correctness by whether you are or not? <laughs> it's it's not. It, that's not the case, Mackenzie Hoffman. I only <laughs> I only declare verbal correctness when I am correct. <laughs> it, it's considered weak fe. Okay. So people don't like it. They very strongly dislike it when you say that you are right and they are wrong or that you are yes, exclusively right about I, something. I used to fight with someone that Or that you one, figured something like, out. Yeah. You know, they they yeah. just don't like to hear it. No, people don't in general. Because like I had, we had arguments like that before ourselves in the past. I don't think it's you on the cheek. That's emotional display four. Yeah. Emotional display four. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can you can put it in your repertoire of displays if you'd like. It's expressing it's expressing pleasure in a pleasant way. Like that. Ooh, I don't know if I I might have got prints on it, but. Cameron, what emotion would you say this conveys? <laughs> um, uh, I, I've done something wrong, Dad. It's, oh my gosh, what's it called? Oh. Um, guilt? Not guilt, but sort of like an excited. Mischievousness? Acknowledgement of one's own guilt. Would you call it mischievousness? Yeah. Would you call it coquettish? I can't say that no. coquettish is something I'm familiar with. I'm what's saying no. What's the definition of coquettish? Uh, shyly flirty. Shy and flirty. Uh, no, flirty. Not, not or or that, no. <laughs> flirty. <laughs> I guess. Shy. Combination flirty. of shy and flirty. Whatever a combination of shy and flirty is. With just a smidge of bashful. A little bit of that, yeah. yeah. That was one of the words. You know how to represent bashful in drawing form, don't you, Cameron? You're talking about doing a face and doing a special emotion on the face. 
Or doing like, I'm not sure. I might, I'll probably do like an internet search of Bashful. Okay, here, this is Bashful. Oops. Rachel, can you hold the camera so that it shows my whole body? It's to show my, my feet too, yeah. Yeah. That's bashful. Um, just kind of kicking your foot in the dirt. With your oh, oh shucks. You don't Golly. have any posture. Golly gee. You're a little wet noodle. That's bashful. Okay. And the face is doing what? <laughs> I'm not going to say I need a drawing of bashful. I'm just saying in case you ever wanted to do bashful. <laughs> the face is looking down. Uh, probably going like this. <laughs> Now, now you know what it looks like to display bashfulness. If it's one of the Disney characters, which yeah, I think it is, time. then I would have kind of specifically almost avoided it. Anything that I ever considered kid stuff or something, I just even if I had to, sh if I had to show it to kids in a school setting for some reason, like it's lunch and it's raining, um, I would definitely ignore the movie. Well, the answer, Mackenzie Hoffman, is this. I claim to be contingently correct, which is to say, I'm correct pending being corrected. Um, I'm always open and welcome to be corrected about something. And when I am corrected, I adjust my position on the thing or statements that I make about it accordingly so that I don't get corrected again. As a consequence, I get corrected infrequently. I've been doing that for a long time. So when I say that I'm correct about something, what I really should say is, pending a good reason to dispute my reasoning on this, we all should assume I'm correct about it because the reasoning withstands scrutiny. Now, you may disagree with that, but that's my position. And I think in general it's true. The more time and energy I spent thinking about something, the more likely it is to withstand scrutiny because I'm not somebody who's going to stubbornly insist that I retain parts of things that don't make sense, that don't withstand scrutiny. That's an FI move. That's true, Sean. I do appreciate being corrected, but I am, you know. So I'm not entirely precise in my language. When I say I'm correct, I should probably specify I'm contingently correct. That I have good reason to believe that I'm correct because I've not heard any arguments to the contrary. And I understand both the scope of arguments typically made within this arena and the this, this set of kinds of arguments that can be made. And I understand sort of on all frame levels whether or not it's a strong position or not. So in other words, it's very battle tested. I don't, I don't affirm things that aren't very battle tested, usually. So, there is a very interesting question that's been brought up here, sort of incidentally, which is, is it the case that <sighs> timing somebody out, let's say, represents a form of coercion? Um, well, it certainly comprises a form of non-consensual action taken by one party upon another. So whether or not that comprises coercion, is another question, you know? Um, it certainly is unilateral action, exercising of powers, but does all exercise of power, does every instance of exercising power or discretion represent an act of coercion if that power or discretion is exercised 
unilaterally. <coughs> I mean, maybe technically on some level. It's an interesting question. Have I ever mentioned, Cameron, that you are the sunshine of my life? And when you're not here, it's nighttime. You are the, I don't know the words, <laughs> of my word, I don't know. Only every day, Eric, you're calling me like 30 times an hour. Right. Constantly, hey Cam. Hi there, hey buddy, bro hug. Yeah, I'm constantly sending him bro hugs via text. Hey, do you want to move the fridge or something? Yeah. Let's hang out and throw a football back and forth. You know what would be cool? It would be to uh, go on a bicycle ride. Is it okay. too late to go on a bicycle ride right now? Um, I don't have a working bicycle, but you and Rachel do. Oh. Uh, I've got scooters at home. Well, um, you could ride those, or you could ride your bikes, and I could grab a scooter and go back. Uh, let's see what Rachel wants to do. Yeah, yeah. I think I have three scooters that are charged over. That's if you cool. Guys, you want to do that? Um. All right. Well, um, I'm going to call it a live stream. Um. Thanks for being here. I love you all. Be nice to each other, please, if possible. And when you leave here, I ask that you do yourself the favor of not carrying with you negative shit in your headspace after you leave. Sometimes that happens to me. It's unfortunate when it does. Go to Sean's stream. Um, he's streaming now. If you want to continue hanging out, you can hang out over there. Sean, if you want to put that link, I'll wait to end this until after you put the link. Um, and But my key takeaway from this is don't let shit that happens on YouTube occupy your head with negative shit. Don't let, it, don't let negative shit lease headspace from you against your will to the extent that you can avoid it. Sometimes that happens to me, which is why I'm suggesting that... Uh, which is why I'm suggesting... Try not to do that. Remind when you happen to do that, you go, oh, that's right. This is what Eric was talking about, giving headspace to negative shit from YouTube. Anyway, remember, I love you and it's gonna be okay.